What's up guys, I'm Steven. Have you ever seen one of these before? These are pick and place machines and they automatically place all the components onto a circuit board. They've got these tiny little vacuum nozzles that pick up the component and place it exactly where it's supposed to be. It makes assembling a circuit board totally automatic with like almost no human interaction necessary. Well, I just finished doing the Kickstarter for the glow tie last year and I had to solder over 3000 components by hand for it. And frankly, it was pretty poopy. So, I want to pick and place. The only problem is, so I'm gonna build my own. So this machine's gonna have to do three main things. One, it's gotta be able to pick up super, super tiny things. Two, it's gotta be able to place those super tiny things super precisely. And three, it's gotta be able to constantly provide a stream of those tiny things to be picked and placed. These tiny things being electrical components. So for picking up the components, I'm gonna use these. This is a vacuum pump, and this sucker is gonna provide a little bit of suction through this nozzle right here, so that when it comes down on top of a component, it can grab it and pick it up. When I wanna drop the component, I have this, which is a solenoid valve. This will let me control when there is actually a vacuum being pulled through the nozzle or not. So I can turn it on when it comes down to pick up a component, I can turn it off when I wanna place it. Now for actually moving the components around to where I want them to be, I got a CNC. This is the Acro 55 from Open Builds. It's originally designed to be like a pen plotter or a laser cutter or something, but I think I can turn it into a pick and place. And for the final challenge of supplying the components, I'll have to build a feeder. Feeders in the big boy machines are these insanely complicated little robots that can incredibly precisely index forward component tape while also simultaneously peeling off this protective film on the top. This is a challenge for another day. But in the meantime, I'm gonna build this butte and add in all the vacuum bits so hopefully it can suck up parts and move them around. Here we go. It's done. This thing was super easy to put together. It only took me like two or three hours to get the whole thing assembled. It's gonna be my absolute bare bones skeleton for my pick and place. Now it's already got all the motors and wiring hooked up. It's just not connected to a controller board. So that's why I have, where is it? Whoa. This guy. So a pick and place is a really tricky thing to control because it has a million stepper motors. It has X, Y, and Z for moving the head around. It has one for the actual head to rotate in place because when you pick up your component, you might need to rotate it around to match the footprint on the board. So that's four. Along with sometimes they have conveyor belts. It's just really, really hard to find something that's gonna control all of these different motors. So the first thing I'm gonna be trying out is Marlin. Marlin is firmware that was designed for 3D printers and 3D printers are pretty similar to a pick and place. They have X, Y, Z and they have a fourth motor. Instead of rotating the head, they have moving the extruder. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try putting Marlin on an Arduino Mega with a ramp board. The ramp shield that goes into an Arduino Mega is pretty much just a breakout for five stepper motor drivers along with some MOSFETs to control stuff like a heated bed. For me, I'm gonna be controlling the pump and the solenoid valve, but this should do a pretty good job controlling this thing. Okay, I'm gonna put Marlin on this guy and then hook all the motors up to their respective stepper motor drivers and hopefully I can get this thing to move. <laughs> So the Marlin firmware is originally designed to control a 3D printer, which this thing is definitively not. So there's a lot of things that I'm gonna have to change in the configuration to make it work kind of the way that I want it to. I'm gonna do some cheeky stuff like wire the vacuum pump into where the fan should be. So when I wanna turn on the vacuum pump to pick up a component, I can just set the fan to 100 and suddenly the vacuum pump will come on. Little hacky things like that. I wanna get the whole thing running automatically just based on G-code, not me like flipping a switch to turn on the pump. I want this controller running the bare bones of this machine. All right, let's edit the configuration file and upload the C binary to the microcontroller. <laughs>
got all the stepper motors connected. I wired the pump into the fan port. So hopefully when I turn the fan on, the vacuum pump will come on. I connected to Marlin in CNC JS. It's actually the same thing I used to control the motion control rig. Let's send some G-code to it. Yes! Woo! All right! X-axis moves. That's so cool! All right, let's try the little nozzle one. Ah! It's so cute! Oh, you gotta see this closer. Okay, so here's my favorite part. Because I hooked the vacuum pump up to the fan output on the ramps board, if I send the command to turn the fan on, the pump goes on. And then when I send the command to turn it off, it goes off. <laughs> what a hack. It works though, it totally works. So now that everything is controlled via G-code, I'm gonna try and get all my tubing hooked up so I can actually try sucking things up to the head. Actually, no, let me see if I have some. So it has come to my attention that I don't have the tubing necessary to connect all this stuff together, so let's go get it. Let's try this again. theoretical until just now when I ran all those and like was actually able to pick stuff up and manipulate it and put it back down in different places. This now officially feels doable. <laughs> Before I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm really gonna be able to do this. Now it feels like I can. Oh man. Yeah, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked about this. So the next steps are adding a Z axis so I can move the nozzle up and down. And that will let me do a much better job of actually picking things up. Right now I have a very finely tuned Z height so I'm able to pick up the paper but also not drag it when I let the vacuum go. And it's totally not gonna work for actually picking components so I need to add a Z axis. After that is mounting cameras. So most picking places will have a camera on the head and that camera will be able to look at the board so it can line itself up properly. Then there's also a nozzle facing upwards that will be able to check and see if the nozzle actually picked up a component and if it did, check its orientation so it can rotate it so it'll actually fit the footprint on the circuit board. So I gotta add those guys. And then there's the feeder. And the feeder, the feeder's gonna be, mm, it's gonna be a thing. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> It's gonna, it's like such a cool challenge. And it's, yeah, it's cool. It's cool, but it's just really effing difficult. <laughs> By the end of this whole thing, I just wanna like feed in reels of components and boards and have finished circuit boards coming out the other side. In the next one, I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. It'll probably be pick and place related. It depends on what kind of makes sense to work on next based on me having this done now, so we'll see. Well, anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching.